Elizabeth Blackwell, Changing the World of Medicine by Dane and Downey. Elizabeth Blackwell changed the world of medicine. Elizabeth Blackwell was a very important woman in medical history and she paved the road for other women in medicine. She also showed that women can do the same thing that men can and that all women should have the same opportunities as men. Elizabeth Blackwell was born on February 3, 1821 in Bristol, England to the parents Samuel Blackwell and Hannah Lane Blackwell. She had two older sisters, Anna and Mariana, and one younger sister, Emily. They grew up in Bristol for most of their life. At first, Blackwell was repulsed by the idea of a medical career. At the time, she hated everything connected with the body and could not bear the sight of a medical book. In her teen years, she and her family immigrated to America in hopes of her father's business becoming more successful. The Blackwell family started their new life in New York. The idea to pursue medicine was first planted in Blackwell's head by a friend in Cincinnati who was dying of a painful disease. Her sister supported her dream, but her parents knew that women weren't doctors and women didn't go to college. So Blackwell got a job teaching music at an academy in Asheville, North Carolina, with the goal of saving up $3,000 necessary for her medical school expenses. Elizabeth pursued her dreams of becoming a doctor, and she applied to many other colleges that declined her applications. So she applied in hopes of becoming accepted to Geneva Medical College, also today known as Hobart and William Smith Colleges in Geneva, New York. During this time, women didn't go to college or get degrees. So the college asked the student body whether to accept her or not. Everyone thought that her application was a prank, so they accepted her because they knew it was a prank. When classes started, they soon realized that Elizabeth was dead serious. They couldn't kick her out, so they just had to let her learn. The students in the college, all men, refused to talk to her because she was a woman. Some of the teachers even refused to teach her because she was a woman. So she had private lessons with a few teachers. Eventually, everyone began to accept her and talk to her. Blackwell had an enormous impact on the class. Her presence turned a group of boisterous young men into well-behaved gentlemen. Whereas before, there was so much confusion and chaos in the lecture hall that the lecture itself was barely audible. With Blackwell's arrival, the male students sat quietly and listened attentively to the lecture. Eventually, she even graduated from college. She was rejected from many hospitals in America because of her gender. So she visited a few hospitals in Britain and then headed to Paris. Just like in America, she was rejected from many hospitals due to her gender. Later, Blackwell became a doctor at a clinic, also becoming the first woman to become a doctor. After working at this few clinics, at this clinic for a few years, she decided that she'd open her own clinic. Blackwell opened her own clinic for women and children only. All of her sisters worked there and it was very successful. When Blackwell was treating an infant with a disease, she squirted some con contaminated solution into her own eye accidentally and contracted the infection. She lost sight in her left eye and thus lost all hope of becoming a surgeon, so she retired. She went to North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Paris, and England to teach women how to become doctors. When the American Civil War broke out, the Blackwell sisters aided in nursing efforts. In 1856, when Blackwell was establishing the New York Infirmary, she adopted Catherine Kitty Berry, an Irish orphan from the House of Refuge on Randall's Island. Diary entries at the time show that she adopted Barry half out of loneliness and half out of a feeling of obligation. Barry was brought up as a half-servant, half-daughter. Blackwell was well-connected, both in the United States and in Great Britain. She exchanged letters with Lady Byron about women's rights issues and became very close friends with Florence Nightingale, with whom she discussed opening and running a hospital together. She remained lifelong friends with 
Barbara Baden Chan and met Elizabeth Cady Stanton in 1883. In 1910, she died of unknown causes. Many people say that she died in a hospital after taking a serious fall down the stairs, but that has not been confirmed. This relates to leadership because Elizabeth Blackwell led her own clinic. She also led other women to go to college and become doctors to pursue their dreams. She also led her own college for women. This relates to legacy because Elizabeth Blackwell left a massive legacy for everything that she did for our world to make it like it is today. I believe that Elizabeth Blackwell was a leader because she took on the many responsibilities of becoming a doctor. She also ignored what society thought that women were able to do at that period of time.